When it comes to understandably presenting data in Excel, charts stand out there, and few charts are specific and can be used to present a specific kind of data. The speedometer gauge is one of those charts. An Excel speedometer chart is just like a speedometer, with a needle that tells you a number by pointing it out on the gauge, and that needle moves when there is a change in the data. It is a single point chart that helps you track a single data point against its target. Here are the steps to create a speedometer gauge in Excel, which you need to follow. As I said, we need to insert two donut charts and a pie chart, but before you start to create a speedometer, you need to arrange data for it. In the below worksheet, we have three different data tables, two for donut charts and one for a pie chart. The first data table is to create a category range for the final speedometer, which will help you understand the performance level. The second data table is for creating labels ranging from 0 to 100. You can change it if you want to have a different range. And in the third data table, we have three values that we will use to create a pie chart for the needle. The pointer value is the real value that you want to track. The rest value is the sum of these two totals minus the pointer value and the thickness of the pointer. First go to the Excel ribbon, click on Insert, and go to the Chart Selection and, under the drop-down, click on the Donut Chart. With this, you'll get a blank chart. Now, right-click on the chart and then click on Select Data. In the Select Data Source window, from the Legend Entries, click on the Add button. Enter Category in the name of the input bar. After that, select the Value column from the first data table. That is cell B3 to B7. Click OK, OK again. Once this is done, you'll get the following donut chart. But you'll notice that this is not a semicircle and it's facing the wrong way. The next thing is to change the angle of the chart. For this, right click on the chart and then click on Format Data Series. In Format Data Series pane, enter 270 degrees in the angle of the first slice and hit Enter. This rotates the chart the right way. Next, we'll hide the data series in the lower half by removing its color, adding data labels, and formatting the chart appropriately. So, you need to hide below half of the chart. For this, click on only the part of the chart. Right-click on the bottom half of the chart and select Format Data Point. From the bucket icon, select No Fill. Next, change the colors of the other data series if you feel it's necessary. For the rest of the four's data points, I've used four different colors, red, yellow, blue, and green. Once you're done, you should have something that looks like this. Now let's add data labels. Right-click on the chart and select Format Data Labels. Select Values from Cell and select the labels in the first table. We're finally done with the first chart. Now for the second donut chart. Right click on the chart and choose Select Data. Click on Add button. As series name, type legend entries. As series values, select Values column from the second data table. Press OK, OK again. Once you do that, you will repeat the same steps as the first chart we created. Again, you need to hide below half of the chart using No Fill for color.
Then the format and the chart colors you feel are most appropriate. Now add the labels. Once you're done, your chart should look like the one below. It looks like the labels at the top all show the number 10. This is wrong. You need to change the labels to display the labels from the amount labels second table. So right click on any of the numbers, check the box value from cells, as range, select the cells from D3 to D13. Also, uncheck the value box. We're in the home stretch. Just one more thing needs to get done, and that is building the pointer and linking it to a data point so that it moves dynamically along with the table's data. Right click the chart again and choose Select Data. Click on the add just like this one before. As series name, type pointer. Select the values from the last table, that is cell H3 to H5. Once you click OK twice, your chart will look like this. That looks nothing like a pointer. We'll fix it though. Excel defaulted to a donut chart, so we must change it to a pie chart. Right click on the chart and select Change Series Chart Type. Now change the drop down on the third chart to Pi. If the angle is not correct, there is a chance, make sure to change it to 270. The chart has three sections, the gray area, the blue area, and the orange sliver. You'll need to remove the color from sections 1 and 2 of the pie. Select both large data parts of the chart and apply no fill color to hide them. After this, you'll only have the small part left in the pie chart, which will be our needle for the speedometer. Next, you need to make this needle bit out of the chart so that it can be identified easily. For this, select the needle and right click on it and then click on Format Data Point. In Format Data Point, go to Series Options and then add 5% in Point Explosion. At this point, you have a ready-to-use speedometer. All done! Or are we? There is one more thing I like to do when I create a speedometer chart. I add a text box that automatically updates with the numerical value represented by the speedometer. This minor addition makes the chart much more intuitive and easier to read. Go to the Insert tab in the ribbon and select Text Box. Draw the text box in the center of the chart, like this. Select the text box, and in the formula bar, enter an equal symbol. Now reference the cell with the pointer data. In my sheet, it's cell H2. Next, format the text box to whoever you feel is appropriate. When the data in the tables gets updated, the text box's value will as well. Delete the legend of the chart. In the end, you will need to move all data labels to end corners. Your first gauge pedometer chart is ready to rock. Thanks for watching.